Hello, we've been working on this lovely Sony Super Beta SLHF600 and if you remember it was mad, it was doing crazy things, the display was all lit up, it was continuously lacing and unlacing and eventually it either smashed up its deck or it already had a weakness in the deck and a part broke and I replaced that part with one from a scrap SLC20. Uh, now, because of the way the machine was behaving, it looked a lot like there was a power supply fault because the display was all lit up and shouldn't have been. Every segment was on. Uh, now, it appeared that the voltages from the power supply were okay, but there was enough evidence that the regulator chip fails on these that it was worth changing it. had a bit of trouble ordering one because originally I tried to order one from Italy and was told because of Brexit... Uh, it wasn't possible, so I ordered some from China. Now, these may or may not be such good quality, but we can only try. So, uh, let's work on that initially and see if it makes any improvement. So, I'd replaced uh, one of these guides, uh, or the plastic follower for one of these guides in here. I can't remember which one it was. It was a few weeks ago now. But that's done, so the mechanism should be in good order. There's always a risk that the left and right -hand sides of this deck are out of alignment so if we have a problem with lacing up that'll be why but we can come back to that later when the machine is behaving itself so here's the power supply this is the uh, heat sink here and the STK regulator chip is in there so I'll take the power supply out and replace that I can't seem to find my heat sink compound at the moment so that could be a bit of a nuisance if I can't find it but we'll work around that somehow right let's get the power supply out Strangely, mounted on the power supply, it has a beta hi-fi on-off switch at the back here. Why would you want to switch the beta hi-fi off? I don't know. Can I get it out if I just undo those screws there, or is this going to be in the way? Okay, I can desolder that and replace the part, but before I do that, let me just check that the uh, replacements are correct. Okay, STK5441, same part number. A little worried that that might be a date code that says 7816, which would imply this is built in 1978. That's quite old, but it looks somehow newer than that. Now, there's a code on this one as well, and it's not a date code. They look very similar. I would say, just looking at them, that they are from the same supplier, actually, same manufacturer. I have the choice of uh, using the desoldering machine, which... The pump, which could work well on this as a single-sided board, or desolder braid. I think I will have a go with that one. So there's the original. And our replacement, okay, that does not look like a date code, does it? Because that's 5111, clearly not a date code. Yeah, we're a bit short of heatsink compound, we're going to have to work around that slightly. But... Uh, Let's uh, install that. Okay, we have the uh, regulator chip installed. I had to somewhat recycle the heatsink compound because I could not find mine anywhere. No doubt it'll turn up later. Uh, I've soldered that on neatly. I would check it with the microscope, make sure that was good. So let's uh, reinstall that in the machine and see if it's made any difference at all. Just looking at the transformer here, I see there's a winding that's not used. So it goes. It's taking the 120 volts to this and this winding, but there's this one here further along, uh, which does have wires on it. So uh, that leaves me to wonder if this could be converted to 240 volt operation or 230 volt operation. Uh, so I will investigate that later if and when I get this machine working because it would be a lot easier to use a machine if it was configured for UK mains. Okay, we have 
the power supply refitted and all the connectors back on. The machine is ready to power up on my 120 volt transformer. First I want to see if the display looks sensible and when I power it up does it go into this crazy lacing and unlacing mode like it did before. So uh, wish me luck. Power up. We've still got the situation where the entire display is lit. However, the mechanisms seem to behave sensibly this time. Oh no, the display is working better. Look. I don't know if you can see that. I'll lower the light slightly. It's flashing the time on the display. Oh, that's looking a lot better. It's quite dim, but these displays often go that way. All right, switch on. That seems in entirely sensible. See if we can load a tape. There's no recording on this tape, but just mechanically. I think it should have gone clonk at the end, shouldn't it? Eek! It's in a right mess. So that was wrong, what it did at the end there. Stop, stop. Don't, please don't do that to my tape. Okay, so it appears to got itself into a pickle. Uh, it may not be detecting the completion of lacing properly, but it seemed to work a lot better. Uh, I need to just disentangle this. Oh dear. That's not good. I think it may have smashed the deck up again. <clears throat> Are we again in the position where one side, where it's tried to unlace but it's left the guides behind at the end? I think it might have. So you remember that part we so meticulously changed from the C20? This, I hope you can see it, plastic component here that should have a spring on it. It's supposed to be connected to here. So these two parts are supposed to be connected together. Well, it's uh, snapped it again. Uh, that's really unfortunate. So the deck is uh, smashing itself up. <sighs> I need to find out why it's doing that, but uh, we're going to have to uh, obtain another one of these parts, which is... Uh, Bad news, really. Okay, so I have again removed these screws and taken this top cover off, and that's allowed me to slide out the guide assembly with my now freshly broken coupling and its spring. And I have to confess, I'm more than a little bit upset about this because it's not exactly easy to obtain and fit this component. But uh, my own silly fault, I should have investigated what was wrong earlier on. There's almost certainly a bad gear under here that's causing it to not uh, operate both sets of the racks correctly. So let's disengage this uh, drive belt again to the front loader, to the carriage. Now here we are unlacing but this side should be traveling as well, and it's not. You can feel that it's trying to connect, but it's not connecting. So there's something wrong with the drive mechanism in here. Let's take this assembly off. I don't really have enough access with this the wire to the motor on here, so I'll probably have to go from the other side to disconnect the motor. Looking underneath, I see there's a screw missing here, so clearly the machine has been apart before. And this screw here is uh, not done up properly. I've unplugged the uh, loading motor, so 
and get the whole assembly out now. Let's work on it. So we have the entire assembly here, right down to the point at which it drives here. But I'm a little concerned how the drive gets through from here to here, because that gear normally sits on there. Is something snapped here? How does that couple to this? Whilst looking at my scrap C20, the one that uh, gave up that part that's now been snapped, um, I just decided to look at the unlacing and take a look. As it's unlacing, this switch here operates right at the end of the unlace. See, there's a lever there. This lever here operates on this switch right about now watch there you go and then it's at the end of the unlace cycle so i thought well let's have a look at the same switch on this deck and it's missing so either this deck is different and doesn't require that switch or the switch has been removed by persons unknown But my concern is that uh, there may be a gear, a tooth, ripped off this sliding rack mechanism in the super beta, which might mean replacing that sliding rack, which I have no idea how to get it apart to do so. And that assumes, of course, that I have a suitably good sliding rack mechanism in this or some other machine. So I've certainly got my work cut out, haven't I? OK, with this assembly removed, I'm manually driving the uh, loading here. One thing I've discovered is there is no switch in this position on these decks. There is on most others, but I don't know how, but the unlaced position here is detected some other way. But what is key here is the laced up position is detected by this switch here, which again, on other decks, like the C20 is different, the switch is in a different place. But it has a uh, follower which runs along the edge of the loading ring and we have the part of the manual that says that when it's one third the way down into the uh, notch on the ring it should actuate. Uh, when it's not, and I've actually put my meter across the wires at the back here, a bit hard to get to, so I can't show you that. But the point is that that follower is not um, engaging in the slot at all because there's some problem here with this. Can you see that? There's some error in the way this is sprung because that should be holding the follower against the that side of the uh, loading ring and it's not. And that's the reason that this switch was not activated when the lacing was complete. So you remember when I put the tape in, it got to the end and this solenoid did not do that, engage the pinch roller on the uh, capstan. That's because it didn't know it got to the end because this assembly is not set up correctly. Now, I don't know what the problem is at the moment with this assembly, but that's the reason it didn't stop driving the motor. Now why it then managed to break again the um, mechanism on the on the end of here I don't know. Uh, it's a real nuisance because I can't repair this. This is this piece of plastic here is too small to, to re repair and it's too small to print. So you know I've got a laser, uh, 3D printer but that's not going to help me here. So I'm just going to have to replace this um, again. <laughs> I don't have to replace the entire assembly. I just need to take this out and take one off another scrap deck. But I can't carry on like that because I haven't got enough scrap decks. I do have a scrap, actually, SLHF100 Beta Hi-Fi. But guess what? This is broken on that as well. So I can see 
now a little bit more about why some of the things happened that happened because that switch is not doing that. But since this mechanism is different than on the HF100 and the C20 and everything else, I can't really refer to a good working machine to see how that's supposed to operate. It may be in some way related to this component here, which may in some way be related to the uh, solenoid, but I don't know what it is that's supposed to hold this in the position that the cam can do that. All right, well, we've learned something. Well, we're further along insofar as I think we know a little bit more about why it didn't stop at the end of the lacing procedure, even though we don't know what is supposed to um, make that switch and the follower uh, work properly on the cam. We also have the, this difficulty, which has really upset me, to be honest. But um, let's see if we can do some more on that later. I will actually move on to another subject for the next YouTube video and come back to this one a little bit later on. But if anybody is familiar with these decks, um, quite specifically this type, these later ones, uh, please uh, let me know in the comments and in the, in the replies below and maybe we can uh, get a little bit closer to what's wrong here. I'll do plenty more content in the future of course. Bye for now. <laughs>